middle school public forum debate. Today's topics that we'll be going over are argumentation and we'll also be going over the pro case. So here is today's agenda. First, we'll be going over the agenda. Then we'll go over some announcements that Bottle has. Then I'll do the attendance. We'll go over a short speaking drill. After the speaking drill, I do have an activity that I want us to do. Then we're going to see if we have any questions about the topic. We're gonna to go into our pro case. Then we're going to go into parts of an argument. We do have a tournament coming up on the 16th. I have dropped off packets to everyone's school. So please let me know if you don't have a packet. Uh, Yara, I dropped off your packet last week. So uh, the person at the front desk should have yours. And let me know if I didn't go to the wrong, if, if I didn't go to the right school. Cause um, I mean, they said that, <laughs> they said that they knew who you were. <laughs> so uh, yeah, just let me know if, if you are at a school and you haven't received your packet yet. I know I do have a couple of more schools to go to. So let me know if I need to keep that in uh, the group of schools that I'm running packets to this week. Uh, but yeah, so our tournament is on the 16th. I wanna make sure that everybody has the opportunity to participate. Okay. Um, I wanna make sure that everybody's able to participate. And as of right now, we only have three people in practice right now, but I know that it's different at your school sites. So I want to, I'm going to be going up to the schools this week to make uh, debate walls at your school. And that will make sure that it will have all the updated information that I'm telling you right now is going to also be at your school. So if you want to sign up, I'm going to put up a sign up sheet at your camps, I mean, your campsites, your school sites, so that you can uh, sign up with your friend maybe who isn't going to practice and maybe that can encourage them to come, okay? And what else? I think that's a, it for announcements. Um, next, uh -huh. that's it for announcements. No, it's not. I have one more. So next month in November, we uh, will have a guest speaker coming to our live practices. Um, their name is Miss BK and she is the uh, SLC manager, which is the Student Leadership Council. And what the Student Leadership Council is, is a different program that is offered through Bottle and it helps students to develop their arguments to be in a more competitive debate round or more competitive debate tournaments. And so what Ms. BK is gonna help you all do is help you to learn how to cut cards and also learn how to identify uh, certain arguments that will make you a more competitive debater uh, with also helping you to find your niche or find your, um, I don't know, have you guys watched House of Transylvania when he was like, your zing, basically find your thing or your muse within debate, you know? So that's what Ms. BK is going to help you do. I'm also here to help you do that, but she's more, she's here to help you uh, to do that more on the competitive sector, okay? So I think those are all the announcements I have. If I remember anything else, because I kind of forgot to write um, some of these things down, but if I remember them, I'll I'll let you guys know. All right, so going on to our lesson for today, that was all of our announcements. We already did uh, attendance. So now we're gonna go on to our speaking drills. So um, I want you all to get your packets out. If you don't have your packets, please get out something to read. I want you all to, if you can sit up or stand up, and we're going to, you know, go ahead and do this speaking drill. And let me tell you the importance of uh, doing speaking drills because I know a lot of the times we're like, uh, uh, 
I don't know why we do this or what is this um, going to help me to do? So what doing speaking drills helps you to do is to help you articulate. It helps you to uh, focus on your breath. So focus on your breathing and how much emphasis you're putting behind certain words. It also helps you to like, you know, articulate, open your mouth, helps you with your eye and your eye coordination when it comes down to reading. And it also helps you to practice your evidence uh, for the debate realm if you're using your evidence. If you're not, it's just gonna help you to learn how to read and say words faster, okay? So this exercise shouldn't take too long, um, but you know, once we all are participating and I can hear some of you, but if you choose not to turn on your mic, that's okay too. But I'm going to get the timer going so we can go ahead and do so. Okay, and so I'm gonna set the timer for one minute. And so we're gonna do three exercises, okay? So if you see on the slide, it's, it says the first one, we're gonna do it forward as fast as we could, okay? And then the second one, we're gonna read with a word in the middle. So uh, I'll, I'll further explain each one when we get to it, but let's first start by doing the uh, first reading exercise, which is taking whatever piece of paper you get or take whatever material you're going to read, make sure you have it in your hand, and we're going to read it as fast as we can for one whole minute. So that means don't stop reading until the minute is up. And if you run out of information to read, that's why it's good to have a book that has multiple pages or anything that has multiple pages, because I want you to continue to read if you find yourself finishing the page, okay? So we're going to start this first exercise. And I'll start, I'll, I'll let you guys know when I start, okay? So starting the time in three, two, one, go. All righty, that is time, that is time. So good job with doing that first exercise. I know it was maybe a little weird to do that, especially with none of your mics on. So uh, now let's try to do the next exercise. Uh, the next one we're gonna do is gonna be a little bit similar to the first one, but the only difference is that we're gonna put a word in the middle of each word. So, for example, if I was reading something that said, so if I read a sentence that says what, uh, this is what it looks like on the flow, right? We're going to put the word taco in between each word. So what that sentence that I just read will sound like, this taco is taco, what taco, it taco, looks taco, like taco, on taco, the taco, flow taco. I know it sounds a little weird, but like I said, flowing is to help you to articulate your words. It is to help with your enunciation and your breathing. So we're going to put taco in between each word. Does everybody understand how they're gonna do the next exercise? I won't be able to move on until I see everybody say yes in the chat. 
Thank you, Sarah. I see you understand. Thank you, Yara. I see you understand. Are you still with us, Yasin? All right, cool. Now we get to go on to the next exercise. So we're going to put taco in between each word. I'm going to go ahead and start the timer. And when you hear the timer, go ahead and stop. But until you hear that timer, you better not stop. So I want you to try your best. You know, this is not a competition. We are merely learning how to do this. So do not beat yourself up if you don't get it right the first time because we're only here to do practice, okay? So try your best. Make sure you have your materials. You're gonna start back at the top of the first page that you started on. And remember, we're putting taco in between each word. So go ahead, sit up straight, get your paper together. And don't make those funny faces. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I can't see none of y'all. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start the time in three, two, one, go. All righty, great job, y'all. Now for the last exercise, but certainly not least, I know this may sound a little weird, but we're gonna read backwards. So like, I'm gonna give you an example like the last time. So we are going to read not backwards. We're gonna read the whole word, but we're gonna start from the end and read it forward. Kind of like if you've ever uh, read any, um, manga or what is that like Japanese like um cartoons how they start from the end and you know it's in reverse we're going to kind of do it like that so for example the sentence that I will be uh giving you reading it forward says this is what it looks like on the flow reading it backwards would say flow on the like look is what it this <laughs> That, <laughs> that uh, was a tongue twister, but that is how it will sound. So uh, to hear that again, the sentence that uh, you will be reading forward sounds, this is what it looks like on the flow. And backwards says flow the on like looks it, what is this? <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and read backwards. Uh, like I said, you're going to start at the top. I mean, huh, not at the top, but we're going to start at the bottom of the page that you just read. So starting at that period, we're going to go ahead and read from the bottom to the top. Um, take your time. Like I said, this is all for you. This is your practice. So nobody is rushing you. Only thing that you have to keep in mind is the time. So I'm going to go ahead and start your timers now. So go ahead and start. I'm going to count you down. So that is three, two, one, start. Yeah, I'm 
It's me when you can't do it, and I'll go on a break, and I'll come down and give you the key, okay? Alright, baby, you're gonna take me and give me the key. All right, that's time. So do you see how much further you have gotten? It feels like you, you ran out of words, right? So it is very important that we practice our speaking drills on the daily. Even if you wake up in the morning and you're like, you know what, I'm gonna just go ahead and do some speaking drills in the morning uh, while I'm brushing my teeth or while I'm getting dressed. This is a skill that helps you to keep your mind focused. It helps you to get your body and your, your mind flowing and ready to be in the classroom ultimately. So um, great job, you guys. I'm happy that you guys all participated in that. So let's go on to the next activity. So activity or thoughts. <laughs> so we're going to uh, talk a little bit about uh, what are your thoughts on the case? Uh, do you have any questions about the case thus far? So how are you guys feeling about the case? Do you guys remember what the topic is talking about? Oh, hold on. Anyone? All right. Let's go. Yes, so out of school suspension. So uh, the, the topic for this year is saying whether or not out of school suspensions should or should not happen in elementary or secondary schools. Um, do you guys remember what the con case uh, is supporting? Are they for or against the case? So would the, would the con be for in-school suspensions or would they be against? Good job, Yara. They will be against in-school suspensions. And do we remember any contentions? Meaning, do we remember any of the arguments they made as to why out-of-school suspensions are bad? Anybody? It's okay if we don't remember. That just means that we'll just have to review it a little bit. But what the con case is, is saying, okay, good job. So let's read what Yara said. So it's uh, Yara stated that the arguments that are, one argument that will be made on the con case is that academic performance will go down in the students, right? So we said that because students will be pulled out of school for about, what, a week to a month, depending on what the, the, the severity of what they did in the school is, they're missing out on so much school. And so, you know, we're saying on the con side that we don't want that to happen. We don't want school, I mean, we don't want students to miss out on their education. So we're against out of school suspension. Good job. We can always go over the con case again because today we're going over the pro case. But I want to make sure that um, you all know that we also do have the lives on YouTube. I did upload the two practices that we had thus far. So you can go ahead and look over those on your own um, because they do have the content that I was just or they do have the uh, answers to what I was just saying. So um, yeah, but okay. Um, how are you guys feeling about what we went over? Are you guys still, it kind of, I mean, how are you guys feeling? Are you feeling that you're understanding what's going on? Do you want more of more background knowledge maybe on what, I don't know, out of school suspensions may do or how that may affect 
uh, you and your counterparts, or we can get into more in depth, but uh, we got to go over the logistics too, too. But we can go over that. I can ask you guys that later, but let's go on because it seems like we, we do need to do a little bit of review. Maybe we're a little lost. Maybe we just don't remember. So yeah, let's go on to our next activity that will kind of help you guys speak a little bit, I hope. But it's going to help you to understand the next couple of slides, okay? So we're going to go over a, actually, let's not do that because we're not talking, but we're going to go over the pro case. So actually, let me, okay. So while I run to the bathroom, we're going to do a short little uh, brainstorming exercise. So I want you guys to take the next five minutes and I want you to think of arguments that the pro case may make. I know we probably went over that a little bit shallowly. We didn't go over it in a lot of detail. So we're going to think of three, no, we're gonna think of two arguments that can be made on the pro side. So, okay, now I'm gonna give you guys five minutes to go ahead and do uh, what I put in the chat. So we're going to think of five, well, we're going to think of two arguments that are made on the pro side. And we understand that the pro side of the debate is for the topic. And the topic, it says that, um, that out of school suspension should be happening in and out of secondary schools. So go ahead and give yourself five minutes. And I will check back at you guys with five minutes, but I'll still be here. All right. Good job, good job, good job, everybody. So let's hear some of those arguments that we, oh, looks like Yari put some of hers down. So Yara says, maybe suspensions are effective and keeps the bad students out. So, okay, Yara. You're on the right trajectory. Anybody else have any arguments that they have thought can be made on the pro side for the pro side of the debate? Sarah or Yazin? Let's hear what you guys had. Nothing. Maybe let's think about like, if they're making the argument that suspension is good. Yes. So if the pro case is making the argument that suspension is good, what would be an argument that they can make on their side of the debate? Maybe that um, suspensions, what, if, if you're suspending a student because they're doing something bad or they're doing something against protocol of the school, would they be keeping the school safe? Maybe that can be a reason. Um, <laughs> so good job, exactly what I was you know, saying. So to keep other students safe. Yes, that can be also an argument made on the pro side of the debate. So as we can see, most of the arguments are going to just kind of be the opposite of the arguments that are made on the con side. So if they say alternatives or let's just read the contentions. Let's, let's go forth and see what the contentions say, okay? So pro case. So these are the three contentions that are made on the pro side of the debate. The first contention is that suspensions are good. So similar to what Yara said, suspensions are effective, suspensions are good. Awesome. Alternatives like restorative justice fails. 
So we already went over what restorative justice is. We already went over why they have implemented them in two schools. So they're saying that restorative justice fails. So maybe those things are not working in the schools or they don't see the effectiveness of doing that over out of school suspensions. So they're saying that it's bad, right? And lastly, Yazin came in for the save on the last contention, which says that school safety is up, it will go down if they do not go through with out of school suspensions. So look, we already came up with all three of the contentions that are going to be made on the pro side of the debate, which means nothing other than we already know what are going to be said on these debates. We just need to be confident in our words because we already know the arguments, right? So now we're going to go into the evidence to see the, the evidence that supports this. And what we will say, these are considered to be claims. So I want you guys to write down that these are claims. All right. So write down claims. So if you have a piece of paper, I would like you to write down claims. And you're like, what? Because remember, we're going over not only the pro side of the debate, but we're also going over the arguments. We're going over argumentation. In argumentation, we need to understand parts of an argument. So the first part of an argument is called a claim. So these are the claims that are being made on the pro side. So they're claiming that suspensions are good. They're claiming that alternatives like restorative justice fails. They're also claiming that school safety will go down if there are no out of school suspensions. So let's go on to understanding uh, what they're going to do to support these claims. And what do we use to support claims? Or what do we use to support anything that we say? We, we support it by more what? Evidence, good job, Yara. So we have a claim in, in the aspect of understanding the parts of an argument. We have the claim, which is, for example, we're gonna say suspensions are good. Now the evidence or the warrant of that will be, let's go ahead and look at the evidence that helps to support some of these claims, okay? And we're gonna find that no other than in the packet. So let's stop sharing this. And we're gonna go on to the packet. So let's go into the first contention. So like we said, the first contention, uh, the first claim that we have says that suspensions are good. Now we're going to find out what, when they claim something, they have to have supporting evidence, which is, uh, which is evidence, also a warrant, right? So let's go through and see if we can figure out why they claim this, okay? So it says suspensions are good for multi uh, multiple reasons. They remove students who disrupt schools, they provide clear consequences, and they keep drugs and guns out of schools. That seems very loaded. <laughs> so let's go uh, further into the evidence, right? So uh, zero tolerance may yield positive effects of communicating to parents, teachers, and students that certain behaviors such as drug possessions, fighting, or profanity are not allowed in schools. Students are accountable for their actions. Teachers are able to articulate clear expectations about disciplinary consequences and providing a chaos-free climate. Parents are put at ease knowing that, knowing that strong and 
consistent procedures are in place for students who have committed major offenses. A zero tolerance policy sends a clear message as it removes major offenders from schools, school and allowing administrators to quick to act quick with disciplinary consequences that are consist uh, that are consistent based on school dis, uh, school policies. Teachers favor zero tolerance policies because they are clear guidelines of expectations and consequences that make students and parents uh, accountable for the behaviors of students. The essence of zero tolerance is that those students who receive less than firm and fair consequent, uh, consistent discipline end up being taught that there are no consequences for inappropriate or illegal behavior as long as it uh, as long as it occurs within the grounds of the schools the school climate makes a diff uh, difference in the learning environment a chaotic environment decreases the learning because of the constant er interruptions and schools administrators find that zero tolerance is an effective means to maintain a safe and disciplined learning environment beyond keeping children safe teachers cannot teachers cannot teach students cannot learn in a climate marked by chaos and disruption suspensions are important for uh, for keeping schools safe and making sure that there are that they that we are able to learn without disrupt uh, disruptions so we now understand why they claim that uh, suspensions are good they claim that suspensions are good because it allows the administrators and teachers to keep a a safe environment for not only themselves but also for the students and they they claim that by saying so they claim that the claim suspensions are good warrant the reasoning behind that is by saying that uh so, well suspensions are good and they gave the warrant by uh they remove students who disrupt schools they provide clear consequences drugs and guns out of the schools the impact which is another part of you need all three to have a successful argument so you have your claim your impact would be any statistics that says that it will affect either uh, entity, uh, so government, or it will affect people. So this article is littered with information that uh, has an impact. Uh, the first impact would be that um, zero tolerance sends a clear message as it removes offenders from schools and allows administrators to quickly uh, to act quickly with disciplinary consequences. Um, it says that zero tolerance may yield positive effects of communicating to parents. Um, well, so basically you wanna understand that claim impact warrant are all that are gonna be included in the argument. The claim is usually going to be like the tagline or the contention because it's going to say, this is what's happening. A warrant is what you're going to use to support the claim that you just stated, which is going to be the evidence. The impact is usually going to be the part of the evidence that states something is happening because of what is going on. So, we see that in this card, it has all of that. It claims something, suspensions are good. It gave the supporting evidence why suspensions are good because it's going to keep the school safe. And what is it going to keep the school safe from? It's going to keep the school safe from guns and drugs and violence that are tied to the students who live there, I mean, not students who live there, but the students who um, participate are the students who go there, right? So 
I hope that kind of helps you understand what claim warrant impact is. Don't worry because we're going to go over that later. Let's go back to our other contentions so that we can understand all of the good contentions on the pro side. How was everybody doing? I hope I didn't lose you with like trying to mix in two concepts together, but it was easy to understand that by looking at evidence and understanding what those words I'm using are. So how is everybody feeling thus far? Everybody okay? Okay, so. Is this, oh, awesome. Okay, so now we're gonna go on to our next contention and we can go back and forth. Let's go back. Okay, it's not showing it, but anyways, I guess I'll just show it here. So our next contention on the pro side says alternatives like restorative justice fails. Okay, so what did we say that most of, well, I'm not gonna say, but when you look at the contentions, those are the claims. So you wanna understand why, what is a claim? Why does she keep on saying a claim? It, it's something you're stating that you're saying is true. So for example, if you are saying the sky is blue, you will be saying you will be stating a fact, but you have to give evidence to why the sky is blue, right? So you would then say, you know, because the earth is mainly surrounded with water and because of the light spectrum, when it hits off of the water, you know, all of those stuff, right? So you're giving evidence but they have to be credible evidence. Anyway, don't let me get you off track. But going back to the evidence, we have a claim. We have a claim that says alternatives like restorative justice fail. The evidence that we have supporting that says that, well, restorative justice fails to keep schools safe and it hurts the quality of the classroom. Now, how do we know that this is true? Well, according to an article in the New York Post in 2015, students caught stealing, doing drugs, or even attacking someone can avoid suspension under the new progressive discipline rules adopted this month. So that will be an impact that supports your claim that says alternative like restorative justice fails. Are you guys getting how I'm how I'm kind of like how it kind of goes? Yeah. Can I get a thumbs up or or something in the chat? Yes, no, maybe so. I see one. Okay, cool. Awesome. I'm happy that I'm able to make those connections. So continuing to read on through the card because this is our evidence that is supporting our claim. So we say that uh, most likely they, uh, they will be sent to a talking circle instead where they can discuss their feelings. New York City Department of Education has it all but the most serious and dangerous offenses replace out of school suspension with a touchy feely alternative punishment called restorative justice which is really punishment, which, which isn't really punishment at all. It's therapy. Every reasonable effort must be made to correct students' behavior through restorative justice. Advise the city's new 32-page disciplinary uh, discipline code. Expect everywhere it's been tried this softer approach has backfired. Yes, other large urban schools, dis uh, districts are reporting fewer suspensions since adopting the non-punitive approach, but that doesn't necessarily mean fewer infractions. 
in fact, many districts are seeing more classroom disruptions and violence. So we understand that this card just, see you later, Sarah. Understanding that this card just explain why alternatives like restorative justice fails. So we claim that alternatives like restorative justice will fail. We gave a warrant, so a reasoning why we're saying that it fails. And then we're giving like evidence to support that. And then we're giving an impact on why we're saying this and how this can be affecting people if we don't make these changes. So now we're, we, we have a full understanding of what a claim warrant impact may be. And then we have an understanding of the first two contentions. Now going on to this last contention and this last claim that says school safety. So um, suspensions keep schools safe. Without them, there is a large increase in school violence. I want you all to go ahead and read this card to yourselves. And I want you to try and let me know what you think the claim warrant and impact may be. This is not something to, you know, this is not like, a, you don't have to get it right on the first time. I just want you all to possibly read it. And then you can, you can tell me what the sentence start with, or I don't know, can you guys highlight? No, you can't. But I want you to read it and, and say, okay, this is what I think the claim, the warrant and the impact may be. So I'm gonna give you guys a couple of minutes. Go ahead and read it over on your own. And yeah, I'll be here, but I'm gonna give you like, uh, it should take you about two to three minutes to read this. So go ahead, take two, three minutes to read through the card. Where's the claim? Where's the warrant? And the warrant is, um, so you claim something, then you uh, wanna say, what is the evidence behind that to support that? So. What are they claiming? How can you support whatever they're claiming? And what is the impact? So what is something that they're saying, okay, we claim this, we have the evidence to support what we're claiming, and this is what will happen if you don't do what we're claiming, we're saying you're gonna do. All right, so it's been a couple of minutes. How are you feeling about the card? and? School suspensions. Okay, they are claiming that out of school suspensions keep schools safe. The evidence is from, okay, and this is there, if there doesn't happen, there will be increase in gun violence, drugs. Okay, so they claim the evidence. Okay, so yes, so they claim that uh, school safety is is going to be breached so the warrant is uh is basically the evidence so the evidence to support the claim so you said that they're claiming that out of school suspensions keep schools safe and you want the evidence to support that so it will be anything in the body of the evidence so you can pick anything right so you can say that if they're saying that schools are not safe, you will go through and you'll say, okay, uh, the warrant to support that says that, okay, we can start that the kids, uh, uh, we can start, okay. Um, yeah, the kids walk around the school saying we can't get suspended, uh, we can't, do anything says St. Paul, the county attorney declared that the uh, 
threefold increase in assaults on teachers uh, constituted a public health crisis. Teacher survey also indicated these policies are backfiring. So this is probably where you want to start. So teacher survey also indicated that these policies are backfiring. Significant uh, majorities of teachers in Oklahoma City, Denver, Tampa, Santa, Santa Ana, Jackson, and Baton Rouge report that discipline reform e uh, either weren't working or were escalating school violence. Um, I always go for a statistic. If you want to try and support that, if you, you want to say, okay, uh, what is a warrant that can help me support that? You can say, okay, 72% uh, to 60% after the district ban suspensions for nonviolent offenses said that they felt that their school safety has plummeted. So you can say, okay, so according to 75 to 60% of the school, uh, not the school district, but the uh, school environment said that they no longer feel safe. So that is supporting the claim. And you can say, well, it's coming from actual schools. That's how it's supporting it. But yeah, so I mean, it's the claim evidence is usually um, your warrant, which is the reason why you're claiming something. And the impact is uh, usually how is this affecting a uh, uh, mass majority of people or us or a entity, right? So good. We, we kind of understand what a claim warrant impact is. That was the hardest thing for me to understand. I don't know why, but um, how I keep on repeating it to you guys, now I'm understanding it, right? So now let's go back to our slideshow. Now that we understand the three contentions that are made on the pro case, which is one, school safety, two, alternatives like restorative justice fail, and three, suspensions are good. Do we have an understanding on the pro side of the debate now? and we understand what they are running and what they are saying. Okay, so we yes. just finished looking at our evidence and we understood these three contentions. So these are the three contentions that are made on the pro side of the debate. And now we understand that and we understand how they get those contentions uh, fleshed through. They first have a claim, then they try to find evidence to support their claim and through the evidence, because these things aren't separate, you will find the impact in the warrant. Does that make sense? So how we just went through the evidence, we found evidence to support our claim, which we, we stated a claim, we have a warrant. Our warrant has supporting evidence, which also included impact. And that is how you find a viable argument. You, you're claiming, you find an evidence to support what you said. And then what you said is going to be so important because there's going to be so many people affected or there's going to be something that is affected by this. And that's your impact. So now we're going to go over parts of an argument. So I know we kind of waited till the end to kind of understand this, but let's understand it a little bit more. And this is exactly what I've been repeating the whole time we've been going over our evidence and our contentions for the pro case. So you can see here is what I've been constantly repeating, claim, warrant, impact. So a claim is what you want the audience to believe. Like I've been saying, it's something that you're stating, a, a statement that you're stating to be true. So if you are saying my hair is purple, you are then going to find evidence of how or why are people having purple hair? Then you can say this is the impact of people trying to conform people with purple hair that it will kill off all the purple hair people. You see how I just made of a, you know, you that's, that's what an argument is. And that's what debate is. Debate is not empty statements that are said to be true. 
For example, you can't go into a debate and want to tell somebody they're wrong. You're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. That's not right. Okay, you're claiming something. What is your evidence for saying why that person is not right? That's why in, sometimes in debate, we find ourselves losing arguments because we claim something, but we don't have nothing to back it up. So make sure in debates, if you're claiming something, you're following that through with warrants, you're following that through with evidence, and that evidence also includes an impact. So like we said, we claim something, we want something, we want the audience to believe us, right? So that's the claim. The warrant is the because or the reasoning that supports the claim. I know I'm repeating it, but I want you guys to understand. So we are now saying we have evidence, we have reasoning for making the statement. Now, because we're making the statement so good, I'm gonna drive it home by saying that you too will be affected by this if you do not say what we are saying is correct, right? So let me show you another handout, another, I like this visual aids. This is a repeat of what we went over in the slideshow. It says the core element of debate, claim, warn, impact. And it says the same things that were under the claim, warn, impact all in the slideshow. So the claim, it says what you want your audience to believe. So like I said, if you want to say the cows fly, you say the cows fly, but make sure that you're able to find your evidence or the because or the reasoning that, uh, the reasonings that support the claim. Like I said, is your evidence. So this is your evidence to support what you're claiming. And like I said, you can find your impact in your evidence because it's supposed to be in there. If you can't find a impact in your evidence, then I mean, I wouldn't say don't run it, but you want to find something that's going to help you to make that big, <laughs> that big impact on your judge or on your opponents, right? So kind of like the uh, claim that we just made earlier. Look at the example. It says, ice cream is the best dessert because it comes in a variety of flavors. The impact, well, that was the warrant. That was the supporting evidence. It was the because. You can see it start off with because it comes in a variety of flavors. And the impact, it says, and the variety is the spice of life which is not a big impact, but hey, maybe it is to a person who loves ice cream, right? Then after you understand the claim warning impact, which we do, the last part is refutation. Now refutation, I'm gonna read what it says here and then I'm gonna explain it. So what it says here is that debate is not a monologue. Debate requires you to engage with your opponent's arguments. You must answer your opponent's arguments and make answers to their answers. So all that is saying is that during the debate, you're gonna make a lot of claims. You're going to state a lot of evidence and you're gonna have a lot of things that are impactful during your debate because all, obviously these are the elements of the debate. But you cannot forget that you are debating with someone, meaning that there's somebody else who is speaking the same amount of time that you are. So your job is to make sure you're listening, making sure you're taking notes, and make sure that whatever they're claiming and their evidence that they have, that you're saying that they're wrong and you're giving reasonings why they're wrong. And we've already understand how we can do that because we understand both sides of the debate. 